Welcome to a series on Unreal 5. In this video, I'm going to cover some introductory concepts, actors, components, and systems that will help us make sense of later videos when we'll work on the Unreal Editor itself. So to begin, let's imagine a stage. Play, musical, people are standing on the stage. They're actors. They're communicating with each other. Now, depending on what you're watching, musical or play, the presentation might be different. But all the actors have different roles they do, which means they have different information, different movements, different things they're doing. They're performing actions, they're actors, but some may do things and some may do less things. As we transition to talking about Unreal, let's remember first that Unreal is a game engine. It drives the experience. Unreal also breaks down common processes into systems. These common processes include things like drawing to the screen, processing player input, processing sound, and a large number of other things. So we have a common processes called systems, and we also have something called actors. So in Unreal, everything we put within a game, characters, cameras, and many other things, are called actors. And just like the actors on a stage, in a play, in a musical, some do more things and some do less things. But they're all actors. In fact, to help us better organize things, because we have actors and we have systems, we have a thing in between called components. In Unreal, an actor will always have at least one component. And this is called its root component. So we have actors, and they have root components. The root component describes what it is. So think of actors as people. The role they're taking on is what they're doing. In Unreal, we have actors. That's just a general concept. What they're doing, their role, is their root component. However, different from a lot of other game engines, in Unreal, components can have components. So we can think of the person on the stage, the actor, the role they're playing, their root component, and maybe additional things they need to do. And the reason for this is because we often have a need to communicate to multiple systems. And generally, it's one component per system. So we might want to draw things on the screen, one component. We might want to work with a physics system, a different component. We might want to move something, a third component. So when we look at player characters in Unreal, we will often see that they have multiple components. So we see things like a root component, where it is, how big it is, additional components for movement, and additional components for physics systems. This makes a little more sense if we think about how things are organized. So very briefly here, let me go over how these concepts match within the Unreal Editor, and in later videos, when we look at the Unreal Editor and start to make actors, start to work with components, and start to communicate with systems, it will make a little more sense. But at least for right now, let's look at how these ideas map directly to what we do. So if you were looking in the Unreal Editor, you would notice something as part of the default layout. Along the right-hand side would be something called the Outliner panel. In this, it would list all of the current actors. And in fact, as part of the bottom part of the panel, it would say the current number of actors that it had loaded. And in this example, it has 59 actors loaded. We can also see here that we can group actors together in folders. And this can be really useful if we want to better organize what we're doing. We might have actors that are performing certain things together, and we can logically organize them in folders. But we'll talk a little bit more about that once we start creating actors and kind of managing them as part of a later video. Along with these actors, if we click on any of these actors, we can see its corresponding components, and of course, their components. So if we click on the Outliner panel, and we click on a particular actor, in the Details panel will be its root component. Remember, of course, in Unreal, that an actor always has at least one component, its root component. But if that component has a component, we will also see it. In this example, there is an actor, the pickup rifle, which has a root component, a skeletal mesh, which itself has a component called sphere collision. And again, in Unreal, this is fairly common. 
But to sum up what I've been talking about in this video, we create actors in Unreal. These will always be available as part of the Outliner panel. Actors contain at least one component, its root component. These are shown in the Details panel. We click on an actor in the Outliner, and we look at its details in the Details panel. We have a bunch of different systems within Unreal. These are common processes. Drawing to the screen, processing input, managing sound. To make things a little easier for us, we create the actors, and then we add components. Those components communicate with systems, and this allows us to better manage our game development. We can add things we need and only use the parts we need as part of development within Unreal 5. Thanks for watching.